Looks like Super 7's been scouring the silent films for some silver screen fangs. Here's a look at the brand new Super 7 Nosferatu Ultimate Figure. A vampire's terrible ghost, magic, and the seven deadly sins. Out of Belial's seed appeared the vampire Nosferatu, who lives and feeds on human blood. He lives in terrifying caves, tombs, and coffins. These are filled with goddamn soil from the fields of the Black Death. Now then, just before we feast on another figure from the folks over at Super 7, let's grab the tape measure and see how tall the figure stands. Count Orlock, with at least the head sculpt that I have right now, gives him a figure that's about 7 inches in height or the figure is going to be about 18 centimeters tall. And perhaps while we elaborate more dealings with the undead, let's bring in another undead figure courtesy of the folks over at Super 7. This happens to be the worst Ultimates Black Falcon undead warlord of doom. It's only just by the horns alone that make him a little bit taller of a figure than Count Orlock. If it wasn't for the horns, he'd be slightly smaller. And he's not undead, but he's just evil. Here's also what the figure looks like with the G.I. Joe Ultimates Destro. Now, Count Orlok has a rather interesting mythos to him. Most vampires can either be traced back as being descendants of Cain or Lilith. Orlok, on the other hand, was resurrected into vampirity by the demon lord Belial. And while not having any trinkets of Belial necessarily, he does have, though, a set of keys. What I find, though, funny about the keys is they seem to be the exact same key. Does that mean that doors back then were all simply just using the exact same locks? It would make robbing places a lot easier. Or maybe Orlock just happens to want to use multiple keys of the exact same variety. I mean, he just has, happens to have backup keys just in case. He doesn't have the means right now for holding these keys, as he certainly has spread out fingers. That can easily be rectified, though, by simply just popping out the hands that we have right now. The figure also comes in clue with these gripping hands. The problem with the gripping hands, though, is he has a really long thumbnail. So you have to kind of get the keys around the thumbnail and then tuck them underneath the other four. And then you can dangle the keys. This would be ideal if you had a tiny little cat. Orlock, though, on the other hand, does not have a pet cat, but a pet rat. What? Say what? We'll get to that more in a moment. But he also has, again, another gripping hand. So depending on which side you would like to have him holding keys, he can accommodate that. You just have to get it around that really long, super gnarly looking thumbnail. Let's put those hands to the side. The figure also has, as well, gripping hands, or I should say closed fists. Not the most interesting things, but they're nicely colored. You can see they're darkly done here. More dark down below here where the fingers would meet the fingernails, but then you've got a more pale kind of gray for the majority of the plastic. And again, these would just be popped out with the existing hands that he has right now. The figure also has what I could best describe as resting hands. Like you want to have the figure, for example, resting against the chest, you can also use these hands. By the way, all of this can be accomplished. I already mentioned this by simply just taking the hand and wiggling it off the post like this. Take the hand that you want to then use. Thumbsies go in whether you're an undead vampire or not. And you can kind of have the hands being brought forward. By unfortunately only giving him one hinge in his elbow means that you can't have really the arms up here like if he was, say, to be resting. So you kind of have to have him a little bit more closer to his stomach like he's getting tummy growls. If he's having tummy growls, I would stay far clear from him. Again, just changing out the hands is super easy to do. So we can go ahead and let's grab, what was the other hand that we had? Oh, I actually did already put, let's pop this hand off for right now. We'll just replace them with the keys hand. They don't, they're not necessarily called keys hand. Don't look on the packaging and expect to see something that says keys hand. But basically, they're their gripping hands. We're going to put them on this side. And then we'll take what I feel to be the best hands. We're going to pop them back on this side. As he basically has like these clawing hands. These are really cool looking hands. Extending out the fingers, you can see he has very long fingernails on each one of these. And again, nicely done with the darker gray on the ends of the fingernails. Very, very cool. Let's go ahead and right now actually just take the keys off because I'm sure they're going to just fall off and I'm not too careful. And while we have the figure here, let's just put him down here for a second. He has also two other alternate head sculpts. Before, of course, we look at that, he also comes in with a pet rat. That's not really at all what a, a pet rat would sound like. The rat itself is all kind of done in the same gray scale, mostly done in more darker gray. You've got the lighter colored feet, lighter colored tail, and tiny little eyes. Can you make those out? And little tiny buck teeth. I was actually impressed to see that they even took the time to paint the buck teeth because that could easily have been something they could have just left off. Now, I don't know whether these are actually all hand painted, but if they are, nice job on whoever's doing the paint on the tiny little teeth for the pet rat. Uh, he could, I suppose, if you wanted to, you could twist the hand around and have the little pet rat in his hand. 
He only has so many few friends that he actually can talk to. He put a little rat inside of his hand. Uh, the figure, like I said, already does come include with some other alternate head sculpts. I did want to kind of start with this one first, just because, again, like this one does have the hat that's on his head. Now, we will also be getting a future figure from NECA Toys of a Count Orloff or uh, Count Orlock or also Nosferatu. The thing about that figure is I think that one's going to also have a removable hat. This one doesn't have a removable hat. So basically, in, in order to get the hat removed, you have to swap it out then with the other head, head sculpts that he has. And he has three, which is good. I don't know if I would necessarily be displaying him with this head sculpt, but to the credit, at least of the painting team at Super 7, it's been really well painted. Both the hat, very large caterpillar eyebrows that he has. Not to mention the darker shadowing that they've added around his eyes as well. Changing out the existing head. Even though this really wasn't the existing head, actually when you notice at the beginning of this review when I first took him out his clam cell tray, uh, they figured didn't have this head sculpt. I just kind of wanted to start the reviews off first with this one. We're going to pop this one off. And then he comes with two varieties of head sculpt while he's decapitated. And just, just put him down here for a second. He also comes included with these two heads. They're very similar, in fact, to one another. This just happens to have a little bit more of a buggied-eyed look to his face. These eyes are a little bit more relaxed. The head sculpts, though, seem to be about the same to one another. Paint is really good on these. Of the really two head sculpts, I think I prefer this one just because it looks a little bit more creepier. Changing out the heads, again, we're just going to pop that back onto a very large ball joint. There we go. Very easy to change. And again, like the only thing that's really different is, again, just the fact that this one has the hat. Let me grab the other head sculpt so we can bring that back in. And this one just has more relaxed eyes. The teeth are about the same, even though this one does have a more closed mouth. If you prefer the more the buck teeth look to Nosferatu, then probably these two heads would be the ones you'd want to choose. I just think this is the best of the three. Paint on this one, even, even though he doesn't have a hat, he has a little tuft of hair there on the side of his face. And he also has that on the other side as well. I like the darker way that they've grimed up the face by adding a little bit of wash. If not for that, it'd basically be like this color right here. But they've done a nice job of painting over the face. The thing about the figure also is the fact he doesn't really have much in the way of accessories. I know we already covered off the territory of that. I mean, here he has a pair of keys. He also has himself the pet rat. And all the other things that really make up the inclusions of this figure is the it's just interchangeable hands, really, and a pair of swappable head sculpts. I only, again, draw back to the attention that we are going to be getting a NECA release of this guy that's also going to come include with a quill pen and pink pot. We're also going to be getting a letter, I think, and a bottle. This guy really could have used a lot more accessories considering that Super 7 are always really good when it comes to Ultimate figures, giving them as many things as they do. And a lot of usually references to either film cartoons a lot of times or the films as well. Like, I really do think like Nosferatu could have come in clue with a lot more than what he actually had. That being the case though, he does have himself that long jacket that he has in the film. This is actually more of a softer plastic. I would imagine that they probably are using a standard body underneath this, although with really all the bodies that they've changed as much with the Super 7 Ultimates figures, it's kind of really hard to see which body they would probably have used. But this is this isn't as hard of a plastic or isn't as soft of a plastic up here, but certainly a lot softer down below. So that's going to make things a little bit easier, of course, when it comes to making the guy articulated. He doesn't have, again, a split on the side, but he has at least a split on the back of the jacket. So that's going to give him a little bit more extra re uh, relaxed areas, a little bit of actual leeway. So you can bring the legs a little further than what they actually are. The, the only thing, unfortunately, about the figure is the fact that this part is clearly molded in plastic. This is just a plastic overlay. Uh, the colors aren't quite matching. This is a little bit more shinier. This is, again, a little bit more of a matter finish. Kind of wish that the colors match a little bit better than what they did. But the figure does look good for what he is. I think they're also going to be doing a couple of other monster figures as well. This one just happened to be the first one I believe they did drop. And uh, overall, I'm overall happy with the one this one this one turned out to be. Again, when we do eventually get that one from NECA Toys, I think it's coming and dropping in December of this year. Uh, I probably will do maybe a comparison between the two figures. But, you know, as it is for certainly what we're getting here from Super 7, it's not a bad-looking Nosferatu. I just wish, if anything, he had a little bit more uh, accessories going for him. Now, for the figure's articulation, the head's going to be on a ball joint. So, yes, it does rotate all the way around. The head looks up then down and of course back and forth as well. That won't change necessarily depending on which head sculpt you decide to go with. I just, again, happen to like this one out of the three the most. The, the arms do rotate, yes, all the way around. That's on both sides. The arms do come out. They come out uh, originally at only 45. I had to kind of convince it a little bit more to move it further out than that. This arm moves a lot easier, I noticed, than on this side. This, this arm is really tight, but I know it's willing to do 90 degrees, as you can see on this side here. The figure does has also a swivel in his bicep. Again, the only thing, unfortunately, with these, and that seems to be the case with all these Super 7 Ultimate figures, is that he only has a single hinge in his elbow, and that's it. So again, if you wanted to have him kind of having the arms closer to his body, you can do it, but it means it has to be down here. I would have ideally wanted him a little bit further up, but single hinge really won't be able to do that. 
The figure does have a swivel in his forearm. The hands also swivel all the way around and hinge them back and forth. Now, he has an upper torso ball joint. It's just kind of a little harder to get to that because he's got the jacket over top of it. Legs do split out. We already mentioned the fact he does have the cut in the back of the jacket. The legs do forward and back, but a little bit more limited just because, again, he's got the jacket in front of it. Swivel at the top of the thigh. Once again, very limited to only a single hinge on the lower knee. He swivels at the lower leg, at least. Hinge up and down on the feet, and you can also move him back and forth as well. Even though none of these Super 7 Ultimate figures ever tend to come and with display stands. Well, they don't. They don't at all. He does have at least peggles on the undersides of his feet. So if you want to use a display stand, even though one isn't included, you can easily use one from another company instead. You know, again, it's not a bad looking figure at all. It benefits also from being kind of first out the gate when it comes to like the, a more seven inch scale figure. I did already mention the fact we are giving in a NECA release in December. The benefit of that one is I think it also has a removable hat on one of the head sculpts. And it's also going to come in clue with a lot more accessories. If my only takeaway really from Nosferatu, it's not a bad looking head sculpt. Any one of the three actually are ideal candidates for how you want to display the figure. And of course, he does also have the, the pet rat and the keys. But I really think that for being an ultimate figure, Super 7 needed to up their game when it came to included accessories. Neck, and again, I'm only using that as a comparison, came in, is going to come in clue with a quill pen, an ink pot, a letter, and a bottle. Nosferatu, in this case from Super 7, only comes in clue with a pair of keys and he also comes with a pet rat. I really think he could have come in clue with a lot more. I always like that they include as many hands as they do. And I'm never going to complain the fact that this guy gets three alternate head sculpts, but just up the ante, I think, a little bit when it comes to more accessories. That's all I really ask. While not being a bad Nosferatu, no, if anything, the figure only really lacks in one department, and that's his accessories. We've been spoiled up to this point when it comes to Super 7 Ultimate figures that they always tend to throw a lot of things, more than we'll ever really need when it comes to accessories. A lot of times those are either reference to a cartoon episode or an original toy line. Nasratu unfortunately doesn't have the benefit of having either. Being a silent screen stalker, it's really hard to kind of come up with ideas, and yet we are going to be getting one in December that's going to come in clue with the ink pot, it's going to come in clue with the little feather pen, a note, and I think also still going to be the rat and the keys. Why couldn't they have thrown some other things in there as well? Now, I mean, it's not to say that we didn't get, we got bare bones when it came to Nosferatu. We still get quite a lot of hands. We get quite a lot of head sculpts, three to choose from. I just kind of wish that they could have thrown a little bit more in there. By already setting the bar as high as they do with the other ultimate figures, I think, if anything, Nosferatu, Count Orlock, if you prefer, really needed a lot more than what he actually got. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. Are you planning to pick up Count Orlock from the folks over at Super 7? Or are you just planning to wait till December when another company is going to be releasing another one? Also, again, if you guys are interested and want to get this one for yourself, I did find this one at Entertainment Earth. Clicking the link down below in the video description not only will take you to the listing of Count Orlock, but also as well that same link will save you 10% on anything anything at all that's on their site that's currently in stock. So happy shopping. Also, hey, if you guys wanted to stick around for more reviews of Super 7, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that you're also as well turning on the bell notification. Want a little more Super 7? Popping up also at the very end of this video will be also a playlist of other things I've looked at from the company covering quite a lot of territory of all the other Super 7 Ultimates. That's Thundercats, that's Simpsons, that's Silverhawks, Ren and Stimpy, G.I. Joe, Transformers, pretty much have covered most, if not all, of the lines. There's definitely going to be more coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.